and discuss, as we will, like, like some of the things that we've seen out in the wild that you've witnessed, you know, try to make this a little bit engaging as we go forward. Again, my name is Brian Lowe, uh, who we met earlier. Another tidbit, I keep sharing like little tidbits about uh, my history. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but ConnectWise spun up, this past month they spun up a, a, a group, uh, a, a solutions advisory group. Uh, myself and one other gentleman are, are part of that team right now. Um, meet my new manager on Thursday, so we're kind of like still in that infancy phase. But our goal, my goal, and with the team is to uh, be a resource for you out in the field when you have events to go be speakers at those events, be engaged with your customers and help you drum up your business with you know, a pool of resources that we'll have, not only from cybersecurity, but the different other verticals that uh, ConnectWise offers. So about everybody you see from the engage event here, you know, maybe get them involved in any type of uh, programs you do for your customers. So that's new, uh, new for me. Uh, prior to that, I was the senior manager for incident response inside of ConnectWise in the SOC. Um, like I said earlier, I've got several horror stories I can tell. Probably a few of those we'll talk about today. So this came up earlier this morning, and I added this to the slide deck. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the old naming of ConnectWise, with the ConnectWise Fortified products, uh, let me back up. The agenda, everyday challenges, this is an everyday challenges, uh, where we, vendors will change the name of their products, you know, but it's still the same old product, just a new enhancement. That's one of the things. So we'll talk about some of these things today, a little bit of actionable intelligence at the end, and some predictions that we see and, and kind of touch on a couple of big events of 2021. And so one of the challenges that we face as service providers or in the IT industry uh, as name changes. So this is what happened at ConnectWise. This was the announcement in June. Uh, we uh, rebranded a lot of our, uh, our, our Fortify offerings to be more descriptive as to what they are. Um, and we also now like ConnectWise Fortify Endpoint is ConnectWise MDR and we're well, using Sentinel One or Bitdefender uh, will be that as well. And let's see, Fortify Protection, Endpoint Policy Management, uh, ConnectWise Identify Assessment, and the ConnectWise Risk Assessment were a couple of products that we uh, talked about in the last session in the next room. And Stratison is ConnectWise Co-Managed SIM. So Co-Managed SIM powered by Stratison is now ConnectWise Co-Managed SIM. And that's all first now. Uh, pretty much, yeah. Everything's lead. All roads are leading into ConnectWise SIM, which right. is formerly known as Perch. Right, right. Is Perch up there? Yeah. yeah. SIM only powered by Perch. So yes. And some of the challenges that we see across MSPs that, that you see, and feel free to add any here, any you know that may have met. But you know, we look at the challenges with uh, confusion. You know, just a slide I just showed you. you know, have ConnectWise Fortify, what do you have? You know, it's a question somebody asks me, I have ConnectWise Fortify, what does it mean? You know, like, well, there's Fortify Endpoint, Fortify this, Fortify that, and, you know, it's like, yeah, when I first started with ConnectWise, it's like, well, how do you manage, manage? You can't Google that. <laughs> you can't Google. And, and so I, I mentioned uh, in, in the last class we were talking about manage, where, you know, I had to set up, we well, set up a uh, manage to, or, do our incident response cases. And relatively being new to manage because I had used that platform, you know, it was like one of the first things I did, how to manage, manage. And you know, let me down that pathway of like confusion. But the, some of the business challenges, it, it's not, there's no technical solution to an organizational weakness. So if the business is not operating successfully, you can throw a technology at their solution or their issue and it may not solve their issue, because it's still people, policies, and technology, people, processes, <clears throat> and those, those elements. Uh, and so some of the other things we look at is uh, competing priorities. You know, cybersecurity is kind of like low on a totem pole when it comes to uh, funding for a lot of organizations. We have the issue with remote workforce uh, and, and the challenges that we're, we, we, we face with that have uh, come about over the past couple of 
the past couple of years. But I think, as uh, I mentioned a survey earlier, but um, checkpoint, checkpoint systems and like firewall and different uh, security products, they did a remote workforce study that was just released the uh, past couple of months. And they did some really good statistics on that. Um, I don't have a link in this, but yeah, just do a Google search for a checkpoint remote workforce study and you'll be able to find some, that's good, good reading here. We talked about it in a couple places, but some of the elements that came out of that was, you know, with the, with the remote workforce and the change where we were, we were in an office at one point in time and have a protection measures wrapped around us and now we're not there anymore. And so there's a rapid adoption of, of technology there, a big transformation of that that a lot of small businesses have probably entered into it may not be operating as securely as they should be uh, with um, easy to guess password, passwords, things exposed to the internet, open ports exposed to the internet, different other things. And then poor communications, poor cybersecurity skill sets, just poor skill sets or the availability of personnel. And then uh, some of the business continuity disaster recovery issues that we've seen. And, uh, you know, there's not a lot of experience in that space unless, you know, uh, there's the forethought to put that in forward. Uh, redundancy is there in some of our smaller customers uh, in some capacity, but, you know, a lot of the small customers operating in a small site. Since we moved to cloud, a lot of uh, cloud services, um, you know, that redundancy is almost built in. But with a business email compromise, those can be shut down, can be corrupted, data can be stolen different other things so we have those protection capabilities around you know passwords and the way we access our cloud providers and then the increased cost to respond and recover from an incident uh, are getting more and more insurance capabilities with risk assessments bringing in a response team doing a recovery you know paying ransoms if you have to in some cases paying the ransom twice because you pay once it's encrypted and then you pay to Make sure that the bad guys don't release your information into the dark web. Any guarantees of that for the bad guys? Probably not. Anybody know of anything else that doesn't kind of capture those categories on capture or anything they've experienced? I think there's a lot of confusion around uh, just the cybersecurity frameworks and what, what we have to do, what we should do, and what, what is you know best practice. Yeah, good, better, best practices. Yeah, and, and, and especially if you listen to the news or anything, it's, it's really hard to decipher. And your client, my client is going to be going, I need this and that and something else. And you're like, no, 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 no. You're not even getting this yet. <laughs> let's, let's do this first and then we can jump into the other. Yeah, everybody wants the uh, the new hotness. Yeah, the new 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 kid on the block, the new software that's released. Yeah. But it may not solve their solutions. You know, and, and again, if you don't have the the business processes and the people around it who buy the new hotness technology product is just going to end up with shelfware and they may utilize maybe 20-30% of its capabilities. So, yeah, any, any other ideas? All right, so we know SMBs or small medium businesses are our targets, just as much as large enterprises. You know, we have to convince the small business owners that you know, even though you're a small business, you may have 10, 20, 30 people employed, you're still a target. Um, from the Verizon Brief report, the, the gap between the large enterprise and small enterprises or small businesses it is, you know, the, the, for as far as like attacks, the SMBs are being targeted. Uh, and it's financial motivation. Even if they're a large organization, small organization, they're going to squeeze some money out of you somehow. Um, they're going to try to squeeze money out of you in a, in a form of a ransom or some type of attack. But even if you have a business email compromise and you're a small business, you know, that threat actor who's compromised your email can still use your email to perform attacks on even other companies. Uh, we've had several uh, business email compromise cases where the email was compromised and, and there was a long the long con game, the, uh, the spear phishing campaign, where, where then the partners that they were doing business with, they were sending, since they compromised the email, they learned 
who they did business with, and then they spun up a separate domain with a little funky character difference. Instead of an I, it was an L, and you know, it looks the same as you type it all out. And they were sending emails from that domain and basically took over the personality of that company. Uh, and, and so the target, you know, the, the uh, probably not explaining it right, the compromised company, their data was used to target other companies. And the other company who then got, they weren't compromised, but through email and sending fake invoices, you know, they, this one company was out to the tune of about $230,000. And it was a period, not just one instant, but a period over like six months where they had paid these invoices that were coming in that looked like they were legitimately coming from the company that they were doing business with. because they had assumed that company's identity was a fake domain. So that's, that was an interesting case we worked. That was a, that was a, lot, of, a lot of hard work, especially dealing with uh, Office 365 and email. Because we were dealing with the customer who, spent the, who was out the money and not their upstream provider, so we did not see any compromise. So we spent a couple weeks going through logs and records and couldn't find anything except the point of origin when the emails first came in uh, for the spear fishing campaign. And it was, uh, it, was uh, it was interesting to be, once you're individually targeted by uh, a threat actor, it, uh, it's a matter of time. It's only a matter of time before you fall. And so when we look at the threat reports and look around security, there are several different terms that we need to kind of realize and learn. You know, and assets, you know, anything that has value in a company. Uh, threats, you know, anything that could damage something of value. Uh, the threat actors, the bad people out there on the internet. You know, you have organized criminal organizations, you have nation state organizations who are engaging in all kinds of nefarious activities, scanning the internet, scanning for open ports, finding uh, vulnerabilities, taking advantage of those. And, you know, using exploits, vulnerabilities, and then we arrive to something called ransomware as a service. And ransomware as a service is kind of interesting. Um, whereas we as an MSP, imagine you have a customer that would subscribe to ransomware, it's broken down, I'm gonna break this down a little bit. You have the, uh, the organized software criminals who specialize in creating code. You have the attackers who specialize in gaining access. You have attackers who can combine all that and deal with the dark web and gain access. Here's your list. Here's the code. We can get the access. You give me the list. And then you have the help desk, the fixers. Like, oh, you've been attacked. Uh, we can broker that for you and handle the ransom and the exchange of Bitcoin and such. So it's really a whole production line of organized crime that's taking place because it's not just one entity out there anymore it's multiple threat actors working together. And there's a whole dark web business that, that runs like this. As they have business partners that they work with. And so this is what we're facing again. So if you, the lone MSP, the lone guy out there, or you're a small business, um, you know, how do you compete against this? How do you protect against a ransomware as a service where you have like multiple threat actors working together to potentially target you. It's it's difficult. I mean, it, it's, it's one of those things where we have to do, you know, adopt the framework, do all our best effort and everything around that. Um, but this also kind of works more like, a, what do you call it? Like an affiliate program, affiliate marketing. Um, you know, use our software, we'll take a percentage. Uh, and it's kind of a, it's a whole business that's out there. If you've ever, I've taken a chance to dive into the dark web. There's uh, uh, some pretty good things. I'm working with another gentleman to put together a presentation around the dark web and, and people who specialize in that. Uh, so we'll probably get that set up for our secure conference for next year uh, to present that at secure with some of the findings that we have in that. So that's gonna be cool. Scary, but cool. And then the other side of dark web is you know, illicit drugs, money, guns, uh, trafficking humans. So there's all kinds of stuff to, to get, to, you know, shy away from there. 
If you're joining the dark web and trying to do some research, don't do it on your work provider laptop and use a virtual machine. And then by, you know, burn that virtual machine every so often so you don't infect yourself. And so we at ConnectWise, in dealing with these, we put together uh, a group uh, called the uh, a cyber research unit, the crew. Uh, so inside of ConnectWise, the crew uh, basically is a group uh, spun up of, um, initially started with some of the uh, Perch and the Sim guys who developed the, the profiles for the Sim. And they take intelligence across the web, you know, indicators of compromise, uh, hashes, different other things that they find. And they find from cyber uh, the cyber communities that are out there and they build together this threat intelligence that we can also collect you know, from the SOC and we feed it back into the SOC. So if the crew discovers something, we take what they find and can put that, um, those hash values into, say, Sentinel-1 for the MDR solution so that if uh, Sentinel-1 will block those hashes, so we, we, we can do a global block list on those. If you're using uh, the SIM solution for ConnectWise, Got an intelligence there to look for additional alerts or, or those things that are going off across the internet, uh, the internet or inside a customer's uh, environment that we could flag and trigger and set off an alert on. So they do a lot of threat intelligence and research. And part of what they do is put together a, uh, a report. That's an animated slide. So, and the report that they put together came out in, in the March or April. Remember the exact, uh, I think it was the end of March, sounds right. Um, so at the end of March, they published the uh, 2022 cyber security, I'm sorry, cyber threat report for MSPs. And uh, the main author of that, Bryson Medlock, he, he uh, heads up our cyber research unit and is one of the uh, forward facing uh, uh, people for ConnectWise. If you've never met Bryson Medlock, he's a big guy. Looks like it could be an a inside linebacker or a front line guy on a defensive line and has a purple mohawk and beard. <laughs> so he will be right at home uh, next week in, uh, in Vegas at DEF CON. So he and some of the people are heading out to DEF CON, Black Hat and DEF CON, a couple of security conferences uh, from the industry that are out in, uh, in Las Vegas. And so the report, um, they do all the research and they, they based off of what we've seen in the ConnectWise SOC, the events we've seen in the NOC, some of the events that we've seen, what they've seen, and even took some of the uh, incident response cases that we worked over the past, uh, past year and uh, you know, came up with some details and numbers and such. And they focused on some of the major MSP focused attacks in 2021 and then uh, some of the emerging continuing cyber trends and the ransomware attack methods and such. So just kind of blow through these a little bit. And, and again, the, re, the report's located ConnectWise. Uh, you can download the full report. Uh, just look for um, you know, 2022 Cyber Threat Report. Um, I don't have a QR code there. And I promise not to rig all you with any QR codes. <laughs> oh, rig rolling. Not today. And so one of the big attacks from 2021 that we all remember was the Colonial Pipeline. Uh, the Colonial Pipeline attack uh, basically uh, ended up that um, dark side was responsible and ended up bringing down the Colonial Pipeline for uh, about a, a week or four or five days and they ended up paying like uh, 44 million in ransom. They ultimately got some of the money back. Uh, and then this basically dark side said, hey, we want to be socially responsible and not attack critical infrastructure anymore. And, uh, but <laughs> yeah, a socially responsible malware ransomware effect after so yeah we're going to avoid energy companies and critical infrastructure um, so we basically run them a, a lot a lot of work down their head. Uh, and yeah it's, they got a lot of negative attention and they got paid a lot and they got paid a lot but they also got some of the money back so I think out of the 44 million that was paid I think the uh, they were able to recover 2022, 20, 25? It yeah, it's about half, yeah. They basically stole it out of an open wallet or something like that. Yeah. And so, it led to one of the greatest like, congressional hearing moments ever. Where oh, the guy had to say, 
It wasn't anything you have for Christ, but only the one who agreed. As a matter of fact, it was a very lightweight password. We'll talk about passwords in just a minute, but <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it came down because of um, you know critical infrastructure, a lot of money in critical infrastructure and pipelines. And, but I think a lot of the uh, the IoT devices for monitoring and managing systems are pretty much open to the internet. Uh, any, anybody ever know familiar with Shodan.io? Shodan, Shodan website. So Shodan.io, you can go to Shodan, Shodan, S H O D A N dot I-O. and you know you can basically scan for, hey, I want to look for webcams that are open the internet. Okay, boom, right there. Hey, I want to scan for this port, so open to the internet. Boom. Hey, one of this remote access ports open. Anybody has open to the internet? Here's a list. Boom. So you can do a search on these and you can find literally like open ports to the internet that are running services that you can just attach to. And if you want to have fun, search your domain just to make sure that you're okay. Search the domain of your customers to make sure that they might be okay. Um, but Shodan.io is a good place to go to do some intelligence you really kind. Uh, so, but so in critical infrastructure is a lot of the things that you show up on, on, on Shodan are, are from energy or utility companies and such. Uh, so that was one of the big ones and it took down a lot of the pipeline that runs from Texas all the way up to New Jersey. And what's the gas prices, there was, um, everybody familiar with the Florida Man stories? So Florida Man, you know, any type of bad activity that happens, Florida Man did, oh, yeah. wrestled alligator, Florida Man, bicycle oh. in the lake. Florida Man decided to fill up his car with cans of gas that didn't have lids and turned the corner and blew up his you know, SUV. Um, and, and so around that time when the price of, the price of gas is going up that time, because there's no, no oil or gas, and uh, the man was there. And so anytime, if you've ever seen a natural disaster coming, it's like pandemic to like, like Florida, whenever a hurricane comes, it's like, oh, let's go buy bread and milk. And then you like, go to like the water aisle too. Like, no water, no milk, no bread. I don't anybody shop for anything else during a disaster. And so gas was at a, at a premium at that time, and people were like just putting gas in anything they could, just so they could hoard it. Um, oh yeah, toilet paper, hoarding toilet paper too. Was the other. So, but yeah, there was a, a story where uh, uh, a gentleman, it was a uh, an H2, a Hummer 2, and he had loaded up a bunch of buckets of gas, basically, and ended up burning up his vehicle in Florida, Pasco County. That's where I live. I live on the sticks. And so, you know, it was, uh, the challenges of today that we see, you know, part of that from the Colonial Pipeline, why it happened, you know, it was a fairly sophisticated attack. Um, you know, it, it, it was, you know, behaviors, uh, you know, a lot of the SAP software that they use, you know, a lot of scale, a lot of capping so fast. Uh, and, and the root cause of the incident was, was password reuse. We use the same password for this, same password for that, same password for this. We're all guilty of this. How many of you use the same password for many of your cloud services? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because, you know, and, and if you have your email compromised and one of those passwords compromised, you know, like your Netflix account was compromised, but I use the same email address and password for my Netflix that I use for Apple TV, Amazon Prime, the way you can do shopping on Amazon Prime. Hey, you can order stuff from Apple. You know, it, it, there's, once that ID gets out and it's tied to like things that are financial, you know, it's a matter of dominoes before you know, they work your, work your account. And if your account has been compromised, which a lot of times they are, um, you know, then, and, and that password and email combination it can be used. So, you know, definitely multi-factor authentication, please, everywhere you can, MFA, wherever you can. But the, the proliferation of uh, use of, uh, the reuse of passwords is uh, was really what led to the colonial pipeline. And uh, oh, yep, VPN account password breached and uh, password reuse. Yeah, the colonial pipeline was not considered a sophisticated attack. Um, no, not really too sophisticated. Yeah, but they had the account information, right? They they didn't need the sophistication. I know we're dealing a lot more with sophisticated attacks, but colonial pipeline was not. Bad hygiene. Yeah, bad hygiene. Reach, but then also traversing the network was a little more sophisticated. Yeah, all right. That's, that's mm -hmm. was going to be my point as well. Yeah, once you're in, and then from that point on, they went throughout the entire right. organization. 
you know, similar we're having thing uh, to a big shipping company, uh, Maersk, uh, several years ago as well, where they're, you know, they're, they got encrypted with ransomware and you can't communicate to your ships. You got some issues there if you're in a shipping company. So that, that was fun. that was like a couple years, way a couple years back. And the other attack is, of course, the Kaseya attack that happened around the July 4th, around like a year ago. I was reading a report the other day, like one year after Kaseya, and uh, what's changed? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> and then, you know, what now? I mean, it was raised awareness for a bit, but we're still back doing our old, old hat tricks that, that's going on. Well, the, the, <clears throat> the Snapchat one as well. Yeah. Which I, you don't see too much about it. They talk about the Kaseya one quite a bit. But they don't talk about that one very often. And that was a very large MSD. They got compromised, and their clients got compromised. Yeah, and that, yeah, this one, I know with, with Kaseya, it was like, uh, what was it, like 40? Not, not Snapchat, That's which is Carl. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. not Carl. Not, 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 not Carl. 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 Carl Snap Tech. This is Snap. Snap. Snap Tech. Snap Tech. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. And, and so. Like, why is Carl in front of everyone's jokes? <laughs> but, yeah, but with. <laughs> so, with Kaseya, it was a you know, re evil uh, ransomware. And it really focused on MSPs, what we call the um, uh, Buffalo Jump, where a third party provider is, is compromised and then all their customers downstream get cus uh, uh, compromised as well. And so this, this ended up like taking out uh, you know, quite a few of their customers around the Kaseya customers with their, with their compromise and affected like 50 or so MSPs and then downstream to, to their clients as well. I like the idea of Buffalo Jump. Buffalo Jump was the, the 2021 report that, that um, great report that came out where uh, Bryson and his team described the Buffalo Jump. Like this could potentially happen and a year later it basically happened to Kaseya in a, in a big way. But it, it still, it still um, happens today. Even, um, was this last week? Uh, this was last week. Last week. I looked at my age. Yep, so this was last week when I was looking at this last week. Um, this provider, uh, what's the name here? Um, Looks like Russia. Yeah, so, so this, this provider, um, basically um, they got compromised in a similar manner where um, their services went offline because of a ransomware and it looks like around the same time, a coincidence that, uh, you know, Hunters found this in, in, in uh, Russian, this Russian posting that says, hey, we're looking for partners to conduct an attack and uh, on this service provider, we've got, you know, over 50 companies and uh, 100 uh, VMware ASX servers and, you know, thousands of other servers that are open to compromise and two and two together, coincidence, hasn't been totally proven yet, but odds are good, it's the same company. And the public eye hasn't been proven yet, but um, you know, all the evidence kind of supports that it, 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 they're the same, same issue there. And so that similar type attack with Kaseya, you know, uh, compromising an MSP and then getting off the, the downstream customers. So that, that happens uh, quite a bit. You know, in some <coughs> places um, it makes the news like this, in other places it just doesn't make the news at all. Didn't ConnectWise go down a few months ago? I don't know if it was attack, but they went down for half a day. Um, we had, with the Log4J, we shut down some services for Log4J as we were doing our assessment. Um, what was that? That was back in December. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an AWS outage that affected and, SSL. And, oh, that's what it was. Yeah. That's been yeah. Probably yeah. Probably. yeah. Yeah, it's, we'll blame it on the AWS intern, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, they made a change somewhere, um, but yeah. So that that was an outage we had uh, a couple yeah, a couple weeks back. It was the uh, SSO sign on, and yeah. But uh, I think we did actually shut down services when we were doing our initial investigation for Log4J around the first of December. Was, my, my team was pretty heavily involved in that, so I remember it well. <laughs> from, yeah. How many hours we worked this weekend? Seven. All of them. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. There are no hours. There is no time in incident response. So, 
that synoptic attack happened mm -hmm. on Christmas Eve of 2019. Oh, okay. Because we had exited a client. They went to Synoptic and they were calling us on the 26th asking if we still had their backups. <laughs> and we yeah. exited them in August. Oh. <clears throat> yeah. That's scary. Yeah. Like, I mean, you could say for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> like 44 million, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, come on. No, but you break down your network. We probably could have gotten 44 million. <laughs> two Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah. Two Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. You could have the good Sam discount, right? So for just half. Okay. But, yeah, but they basically waited until Christmas Eve and they initiated the attack on Christmas Eve. Yeah, that's that's the big ploy is uh, around the holidays, major holidays, because you know, you're know you gonna be light on staff and everything mm -hmm. else. And you can have a very successful run without too many people being alerted or the right people being alerted to take action. I, and I'm not even being in normal world, so it's happening for the same thing that I'm not them. I'm but. just wondering, <laughs> I'm just wondering now that people work from home or whatever, you get plenty of people that will start to get sauce on a Friday before fill in the blank or whatever, like, I'm just curious, if you look at the data going back during COVID, right, where people are working from home, right, for a holiday, I was on the vendors, and I mean, they're on camera, and they're like, oh, it's two o'clock, the day before, you know, and they're cracking a mirror, scotch, or whatever, and, you know, how much does, like, your careers change your mouse like, or lack of confidence? I could neither confirm nor deny any involvement in such activities. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll identify myself, <laughs> he started, and I'm like, definitely got a little more lax. You know, my, my wife works at home and about you know, 2, 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday, so we're in that time frame. I hear the shaker going off in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Do you put it in order at that point? You know, That's about the time I start mine too. I can't let her drink alone, you know. I got some oh, right. right. to have it Exactly. That's when we take that afternoon break and go sit out on the back when I or the back backyard. You know, watch the birds and squirrels and dogs play. Yeah, and inside your screen in the backyard. Yeah, well, yeah, I've got my phone with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm nearly like, you know, 30 feet away from the office at that point. Don't have to worry about driving. Um, so ransomware, paying the ransomware rarely works. You know, you've got a 65% chance of getting your data back. You know, you got better odds in Vegas. You have better odds playing, probably playing Powerball either, right? Or Mega Millions. Wow. Um, so 8% of affected companies recovered all data. 29% recovered some, more than half, but you know, for the most part, you know, paying the ransom doesn't always guarantee you're gonna get your data back. Backups, 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 absolutely. And it, it's it's more than ransom, uh, you know, because it's not just the money you pay to the ransomware uh, extortionists, but you know, the, the time you spend to recover, your manpower hours, and the, the downtime of the business, all those come together in some you know, quadratic formula that, that you could calculate. But uh, overall, this came from the SOPOS report that, uh, you know, costs to recover are now up, have almost doubled. Uh, when we look at, uh, it's not all doom and gloom, doom and gloom, right? So uh, colonial, due to the colonial uh, responses, uh, you know, to, uh, POTUS, uh, that's President Biden, you know, we had the, the direct order, hey, we need to be more proactive. You got you know, different uh, cyber security initiatives going on, and they did recover, of the Bitcoin, they did recover uh, 63, that's more than 2.3 million. Yeah, well, so now, that's, that's like 23 million, not 2.3. So well, well, that is under Biden, or is that? That is <laughs> the other bike, the older one. <laughs> the big guy. The big guy, it's the big guy. <laughs> yeah, so that, that now, that's a typo. That should be like twenty-three million, not two point three. Well, at the time, sixty-three Bitcoin would have been a, a fair bit. And so, um, so that's government stuff. And and we also look at uh, uh, some additional stats they got out of uh, that from the SOFUS report was that um, that in twenty twenty one, the past couple of years. 
the success rate of encrypting data has gone down, which is kind of a good thing because we've got more protection out there. Uh, success rate is, is down. Uh, but the attack stop before the data can be encrypted, we're seeing that a lot more. So we're catching it before it's, it's uh, fully encrypted or we've got enough uh, notifications out there with SIM or MDR, the large adoption of MDR. Uh, and, and Sentinel-1 is a great product as well for catching it and if you can like, find it initially. And they haven't gotten the full-blown administrator account for the local host. You can do a pretty good recovery on that. And, and uh, correct, correct me if I'm wrong here, but Sentinel-1, if you're using the strategies in SIM mm -hmm. and Sentinel-1 combined, right, the, the SIM can, can activate Sentinel-1 to the active EDR, right? Uh, so Sentinel-1 media EDR and the SIM, you get the alert from the SIM, and if you have alert that can trigger in some scripting, you can do some things with Sentinel-1. Yeah. But we, we normally but you have, have to have Sentinel-1, or you have to have, you have, to have um, Stratazen on the workstations as well, not just on the server side, I thought, correct? It, it uh, does isolation, right? It does isolation, yeah. 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 Is, that, is that still I accurate? believe so. I'd have to check on a strategy product because I'm not 100% okay. familiar with that solution. Which, which well, I was going to ask, is, does the Perch component act that same way? Uh, Perch just tells you things. Okay. It's a notification. Okay. You, but those notifications, you're going to take that notification and put some action around it, some automation around it. Um, but, but we don't necessarily provide that automation. Um, I, I thought it was sentinel Sentinel One does the isolation. Yeah, yeah. It, it does. Yeah. Yeah. And with the the volume shadow service, if if it does, if it tries to encrypt, you're able to like do a rollback. Do a rollback. As long as you kind of turn it off. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And, and and not much has completely changed on the host because that that VSS that that shadow copy can get overwritten if there's been a significant action or uh, some time. I think like an hour, hour and a half has passed. Right. It'll get overwritten. But I may be going off topic here too, but like I back all of my clients up with a Cronus offsite, so yep. the Cronus is cloud. And on top of that, you know, it's, it's encrypted too. But have there been any reports or is there any ransomware that's been able to reach back out to that hosted backup source through an agent or anything? Yes, it's multiple times. Yeah, yeah, it's going to depend on your solution, right? Yeah, how it's set up is really the more important thing. So a lot of people will, they don't. The, the cloud service providers give you access to those backups in certain ways. If the machine that is being compromised is, has that access, right. you, a lot of times they can go right in. And so, so in a in an end user kind of capacity, or a, you know, like a one person shop, where you're only backing up one machine, you don't have a server or anything else. A lot of times, you can, that machine is compromised. Well, they've got all the credentials and everything else are in that machine, so they yep. just go to the backup service and delete everything. So, well, yeah, so in my case, the Cronus agent I'm running, the, the encryption password for the, the backup settings is, is different. And, and, and your client probably doesn't know yeah, that's not happening. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in those cases, you're, you're probably I'm just trying to, you know, we're all here talking about so, trying to yeah. get yeah. like, understanding. Yeah, you don't want to do any like direct network shares. Yeah. So that's bad. Yeah. I think Axiom is one of the truly firewall solutions from the actual live instance. Yeah, Beam does it as well. They, they, they have a... So that's newer for them then, because they weren't, they weren't like that originally. Well, it depends on the provider and providing the storage. Okay. Beam doesn't do much other than yeah. the backup, but the storage provider has... Well, Beam has immutable backups now, so you can set them so that you can say, hey, listen, I don't care if I tell you to delete this. You can't delete it for seven days. So yeah. you, what you do is you say, hey, you got a time limit. Mm -hmm. You can delete mm -hmm. this, but I'm not deleting it for seven days. And so that prevents the whole, well, I don't have a backup. Hopefully the ransomware doesn't wait seven days. So yeah. That's the other issue with that whole mutability is there's a time component to it. Yeah, and that's, some things, you know, back up your critical data, update your operating system, raise awareness, security awareness training. You know, if you see something, say something. You know, hey, that looked odd. Well, maybe you should talk to somebody about that. I clicked on this link and the doc screen blew up. 
It's supposed to be something in email. What's that? It's supposed to be an Excel spreadsheet. No, fishy. Security awareness training goes a long, long way. Okay, and Brian, you didn't really bring up any of the like, you know, in 2021, it was actually a pretty crazy year, right? Yeah. Because not only did you have Home and Pipeline and Visea, but you also had Exchange uh, vulnerability that came out. Mm -hmm. And there's still a crap ton of machines that still have that vulnerability mm -hmm. and are being utilized. Yep. And log for J. Log for J. Okay. Right. While they weren't direct, they didn't have direct effects like Casey and mm -hmm. Colonial did. There, we're still seeing the effects of some of those uh, compromises and vulnerabilities to this day. We're yeah. still seeing. So it's crazy. Yeah, and that's um, and, and these are based off the report that they put together. The the connect noise and speed report. Those are a couple of things that they focused on. Uh, were, were those? I don't know. We kind of mentioned log for J. We didn't really go into it in the report. Got it. Um, but the other thing that's affecting us is the Russian-Ukraine conflict. Uh, Conti, one of the big um, ransomware players out there, uh, basically they, they've been kind of reduced because a lot of their operations <coughs> were based out of Ukraine. Um, so if you're not, you know, if you're engaged in war with another country and being bombed, you're probably, your infrastructure's not as well there. And you're not going to be hanging out in the office trying to get, uh, you know, steal ransom from uh, unsuspecting targets. Uh, but the different sanctions and payouts and different other things, so there's a lot of things that have, have affected this, and the actual numbers for ransomware cases has been decreasing this year uh, due to the conflict uh, in, in, in that area of the world. So, That's interesting. Well, what we talked about at Secure was, mm -hmm. yeah, we're, we've seen the landscape change because the threat actors have a bigger target between pick whichever side of that conflict you want to be right. on, but they're attacking Russia or they're attacking Ukraine, right, or Ukraine partners. My worry is, and I think this was echoed by a few people at Secure, is there's a lot of pent up, there's a lot of resources that are currently being utilized in, the, right. in that conflict, and we aren't seeing the effects of that yet. At some point, that conflict ends, in whatever way it does, right? right? That, that those resources are then going to be back on the table, and will we be prepared for the what I think is going to be the deluge of hey, we can go after everybody because they also learned a whole lot of new stuff mm -hmm. in that you know in what they in the sci psyops that they've been doing over there. So yeah. I, I'm I don't want to even think about 2023 right now. Yeah, that's that was the <laughs> crystal ball prediction thing that was kind of towards the end here was like oh. we're going to see that. Sorry. Uptick after this ends, but yes, you nailed it right on the spot. So that that is totally true. And, and but some of the other notable findings uh, from our report, um, you know, we looked at, at basically 500 incidents across our, our partners. This is inside of ConnectWise, and of that, 40% were ransomware, 25 were directly related to Exchange, uh, others were coin miners, and then the others, some of the others were uh, just poor password hygiene and. And different other elements, and just you know, people doing stupid things, which happens quite a bit. Uh, but we were pretty much even, you know, uh, like our Q1, like of, of 2021. Um, we were busy around the same time. We weren't see any too much of a spike. We were like right around that 20, 25, 30 percent. You know, Q3 was pretty big. Q2 a little low, but uh, the numbers we, we were steadily operating and responding to incidents. Didn't really see a huge spike in, in our numbers. Uh, that wasn't too bad. We, we had some cases that went on longer than others. We had one case that was, uh, I'll throw these others up here while you look at them, I'll tell you my story. But we had this one case where we we're dealing with a shipping company, and every time a ship would go into port, they have to upload maps. And how do they upload maps to a ship? Via USB key file. So here's a USB drive, here's the latest maps, here's the channel markers, go plug it into your nav systems. Every ship in this environment was either getting infected with, with malware, one shape or form, but coin miner. So if you're running a coin miner, it's a coin miner on a ship, taking out resources and such, and they only have limited bandwidth in satellite. So as it goes to like report in, it's saturating their sat link, and which is why they got the issue. Like, why can't we communicate? It goes, well, you're sitting out with this bandwidth for the coin mining. They didn't notice it on their systems, they noticed it over the sat link. 
And so we got involved because they had Sentinel One. And Sentinel One was deployed on these ships. An MDR solution on a ship with very limited satellite connectivity. It wasn't the MSP, it was probably not the best solution there, but the MSP put it on there. And uh, man, uh, troubleshooting that and trying to get that under wraps was just painful because we were working with the MSP, the MSP was like we were working with the ships, we couldn't call the ships directly, and it, it was it was a game of telephone. To get anything back about. And, and most of the language, English was not the native language of the, uh, the, the, the company area, like Greek, uh, and, and not many people on my team speak Greek. <laughs> it's all Greek, it's all Greek. It, it was, literally it was, <laughs> it was. And so, if you look at some of the industries there, you know, the, the, we are the big target, right? Our MSP, TSP industries, you know, we're the big target of ransomware and you know, manufacturing cover and all the others. But you can see we're the big target. And some of the ransomware that we saw, Lockbit and Conti were the two of the big ones, and then some of the other players out there. But Lockbit and, and Conti, and we've seen a decrease of Conti due to their uh, Ukrainian uh, Russian outbreak. Uh, so that, those are some of the things we saw into that. And the downward trend that I mentioned, uh, this came from uh, Rob Joyce. You know, NSA director in May. And the last couple of months, his ransomware is actually down. Probably a lot of different reasons, but why? Russia and Ukraine fall out. And we look at some of the numbers, uh, like for Q1 2022, for for us, you know, we, we saw a decrease as well uh, in the numbers of ransomware attacks. And this was kind of our projection. I don't know where we ended up here. I got to figure out those numbers for pricing, but. Uh, we figured we we're going to be about even. I'm sure, that was like a glitch, but Russia and Ukraine. But you know, we're trying to crystal ball it. We're like, yeah, we'll make the same. Nobody will know. <laughs> and then uh, when we look at some of the threat actor profiles that are out there, of course, Lockbit being number one, and Conti, and, and Avidon, and Hive, and Regal were some of the big ones. And uh, all these um, different things like initial access, phishing, you know, command and scripting. Windows management instrumentation, defense evasion, you know, obfuscation of files and information, and then data and grab, uh, server stop, all these different things. Share all the groups and these, these different initial um, uh, MITRE attack codes. These are the codes for uh, MITRE attack. And if you're not familiar with MITRE attack, um, there's a MITRE attack uh, profile, uh, actor profiles uh, that did a the uh, crew put together, if you're interested in reading some of the profiles, the attack profiles that are out there, you know, QR code there, it is not a rip roll. Um, but, but that's where you get a lot of the information from the crew. You can also get a lot of the threat actor profiles that you can uh, play around with and upload and also some of the collectors if you want to participate in some of the threat intelligence that they have as a link out to their um, research unit and some of the details you can get from there from threat landscape and some of the activities. Um, the other thing, uh, some of the other practical things that the crew did, um, multi-factor authentication can prevent about 99% of all attacks on your account. Good multi-factor authentication, I should say. You know, if, you're, if your phone's been compromised and you use SMS as your, you know, your two-factor, um, yeah, getting a text to your phone's been compromised or cloned, that could be an out, but multi-factor is definitely a way to go. Email filtering, MFA everywhere. Get a SIM, you know, look for specific things in your SIM like malicious PowerShell, persistence, and any lateral movement you might be able to identify across the network. Uh, da -da -da. Predictions. Um, threat actors change your tactics to stay under the radar in response to law enforcement success, the fallout from the um, colonial pipeline, SMB market. Uh, is going to spend more in 2022. Uh, federal regulations coming and the anatomy of MSP will be different in 2022 as we grow and change. All right, next uh, couple of links if you want. There are the, um, the MSP report findings and the ConnectWise intelligence feeds. This is, this is on GitHub. Uh, so if you want like the intelligence feeds, you can spin up the uh, their programs there on GitHub and, and pull those intelligence feeds into what, what provider you want. They have an API out there and everything else you can build towards it. And then the threat report findings uh, get you a link to the whole threat report. 
And just to kind of compare uh, ConnectWise, there we go. And just to compare ConnectWise to Verizon, Verizon released their report in May, uh, May of this year. And some of the key things, the, the four things that lead to compromise, you know, credentials, phishing, vulnerabilities, and botnets uh, that are out there. So those are the key things that they, they identified and some of the things that they had, uh, that they had mentioned was that they saw a 13% of ransomware breaches, 40% of ransomware incidents involved desktop sharing software, RDP, or some type of open port there. And 35% of those use of email with link droppers or attachments. And then the last one there is uh, system intrusion incidents involved compromised business partners third party, if your third party's been compromised, they've got access, you've got codes and different other things there. The other thing is we're only human. Uh, we make mistakes and a person is usually involved at the center of most security incidents or security events. You know, uh, phishing, account breaches, you know, we click on things, we enter in our credentials somewhere, we shouldn't enter them. Uh, stolen credentials and uh, the other one is that we can reduce the attack service by email filtering, good password hygiene, and multi-factor authentication everywhere. And there's a couple different password models I threw out there. Um, you know, we have the passphrase, doing passphrases, you can do the Shiner scheme, making a sentence. My, my more favorite one is like when I was seven, my sister threw my stuff rabbit in the toilet. You know, equals www, whatever. So, you know, Come up with a phrase, substitutions, which are good. My favorite now is, uh, you know, getting you an image, and your image is your, your, your key tag. So, with a person, action, object, PAO, you have your, your cybersecurity fairy, godmother. So, fairy godmother flew in to save partner servers and desktops. Fairy godmother reminds me what my password is, and there's my password. And yes, that is me face of uh, <laughs> Alina Bottom card or something. And so that's my ConnectWise SSO long and reminder. So rather than having my password written down somewhere, I look at that screen, I'm like, oh yeah, free godmother. Yeah, that's what that is. And then, so password managers, of course we have uh, the password managers here and our, our vendor sponsoring us today, CyberFox, mm -hmm. um, which, which is that they do some password management as well. Um, other considerations to consider, yes, that I did that intentionally. Um, the NIST cybersecurity framework, you know, get yourself an incident response plan, regular review of security procedures, keep your software up to date. Uh, the ransomware notice from the CIA, the, the cyber, uh, CISA, their division of the Homeland Security Group, or government entity. And then the ConnectWise Security Trust and Compliance site. And that kind of wraps us up, so please, do session survey. Any other questions?